So now I'm utilizing that sketch, and the sketch could be any kind of scanned image that you might have. It could be a scanned uh, or a picture that was taken of a prototype. You can use any of those things. Now, doing it this way kind of helps you get there if you've got an image. Otherwise, you would just simply create the curves that represent your assembly straight off the bat. Now, I've done that already, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change my working directory over to where I've done some of these things already. And I'm going to open that skeleton part. All right. So you can see here that I've brought in a couple of those images. If I go to the left view, or the right view. You can see I've, I've brought in that sketch or the, uh, that, that picture and I've, put, I've added some sketches to, that help me start to define what might be the overall driving aspects of my assembly. And if I edit the definition of one of these you'll see the kind of quick and easy sketches these really are. But this is where you start to provide some of your design intent. You put in numbers that matter. You put in uh, relationships that matter to you. And so you start to make it up as you go from a design and engineering standpoint. Okay, so I'm building the skeleton, the overall design criteria for this large assembly. This can be really complex, but the key here is to not make it complex. And I'll explain how. One of the downsides of developing a skeleton is the tendency to put all of your detail in the one skeleton. You could put uh, maybe the definition for the exit of your warp drive right here in the skeleton. And the downside here, if you do that, if you put all the detail in one skeleton, is that a change made to one aspect of your skeleton, and maybe the round that goes on their warp drive fairing, affects the relationship or may affect the relationship that you have on your main hull or the observation dome or what have you. And the, and the real importance here is that when you're going to release these objects, when you're going to release engineering for production, you want to be able to release fixed aspects of your design and at the same time allow for further development of all the other design aspects of your model. So how do you effectively break up your design allowing multiple stakeholders, multiple engineering design teams to be working all simultaneously and at the same time without stepping on each other. And that becomes the key. How do you do that? Well, if you make one skeleton that has all of the features in it, you can't. If you have one skeleton that has all of your detail in it, you can't. You have to break it up. And so how can you effectively break up a skeleton. Remember, a skeleton is a part, one part. It may define multiple parts or an assembly, but it still is one part. And if it gets released, it is then locked, and it is the one that's going to govern the release state of your entire assembly, which, if you're dealing with anything large, will not do. And so, is there a skeleton assembly? That becomes the question. Is it possible to create a skeleton assembly? So if I go to new and I make an assembly, is there a skeleton on my list? The answer is no. So you can't make a skeleton assembly. If I'm looking at my original assembly, that I was going to build my assembly in. It has a skeleton part in it. If I say, give me a brand new 
skeleton, you'll notice that it allows me to create a second skeleton. A second skeleton might be a good way to get going. This will allow me to add multiple skeletons in my model tree, one skeleton after the other, allowing me to define different aspects of my uh, assembly at the skeleton level. And so that's probably pretty good. However, there's a significant downside. In what model do these various skeletons come together? They only come together in this assembly. And of course, the downside of that is that this assembly, this assembly is the one that's going to get really, really big. So I don't want all my skeletons to be tied to the large assembly. I want them to be tied together, yet independently. How can that happen? Well, this is... Oh, and by the way, before I go further, in order to allow multiple skeletons, you have to have a config option that allows multiple skeletons. If you don't have the, the uh, config option that allows multiple skeletons, uh, this would be gray, since there's already a skeleton in it. And if you bring up an assembly that has multiple skeletons, it'll say, you're not allowed to do this, and I'll be happy to remove the extra ones for you. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it'll do, and it'll throw them away. And the next time you regen, you're likely to get some component failures. Watch that. Multiple skeletons, if you're going to use multiple skeletons, however, I'm taking you here slowly, but I'm going to show you where you don't need to use multiple skeletons. Ready? There's such a thing as a skeleton called motion, a motion skeleton. Now, a motion skeleton looks like a regular skeleton, but you'll notice the extension here is ASM. And so now we've got a skeleton assembly. Okay, so what did I do here? I created a skeleton part that is essentially my top down. And I would continue to add some of the grand design criteria to this skeleton, including, and I'll turn on now coordinate systems, some of the main coordinate systems that define different subsections. Now, if you're dealing with a large vehicle, you might have, um, like in this case, we've got a primary hull coordinate system where the pylon has its zero, the secondary hull where its zero is, and the cell. Now, if you're dealing with a large vehicle like an airplane, you'll have a wing coordinate system, an empennage coordinate system, you'll have a couple of engines and, and pylons and so on. You might have something tail cone or a vertical stabilizer. If you're dealing with a large vehicle like a, like a, like a car or something, you might have uh, your frame or main structural skeleton and then maybe a body skeleton and a suspension skeleton or even a front suspension skeleton and a rear suspension skeleton perhaps even a drivetrain or powertrain including engine transmission and differential so you get an idea from a design standpoint as you step back from your design how are you going to divide this into multiple stakeholders. And think about it. If you're going to have multiple design teams, what is their focus going to be? Now, a lot of these things you're just making a guess as you go through. You don't know where it's going to end up, but you can make some pretty good guesses coming in from the beginning.